Hey guys, do you wanna have dinner with us? We are having a Zatara coming home party on Friday, February 16th at 7 p.m. in Miami at Margaritaville. And you can have dinner with us and drinks and maybe some dancing. And you've gotta to go to sailingzatara.com to check it out, get all the details. You've gotta sign up because it's a VIP exclusive private event. Not everybody gets to go. And uh, so anyway, sailingzatara.com. Friday, February 16th. And, and we, we look, look forward, forward to seeing you guys, guys out Miami. there in Miami. 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 <laughs> Miami. And we look forward to seeing you guys in Miami. We got Yay. it. We got it. We'll see you in Miami. All right, so we have stopped. Again, the wind died, and we're going to swim. How do you know it's safe to swim, Jack? Are you afraid of sharks? So basically, we're not splashing a lot. We're jumping here and there, and we're only in the water for about 10, 20 minutes, if not less than that. So really, there's a very, very slim chance we'd see a shark. Yeah. Are you scared? Kate, are you scared of sharks? My timbers are being shivered. Your timbers are being shivered? Are you afraid of sharks? I'm not afraid of sharks, but they all keep saying there's sharks out here, so. He is afraid of sharks. No, he not. just doesn't know I, he is yet. Maybe, I don't know. know. Just about on every crossing we stop and swim, but only for about five minutes or so, and we've never seen a shark, never seen a shark fin. We're always on the lookout. So I think the odds of us encountering a shark out here are pretty slim. You're more likely to encounter a shark uh, near a coast shoreline, beaches of Australia, perhaps, Florida, maybe. So we enjoy swimming. And somebody asked, does mama swim? Yes, I do, but I'm usually the one filming, so you don't see me swimming, because I'm the filmer. How's water feel? Great. Great. Well, this is the longest we've gone without wind on a crossing. So. Is it though? I think so. And for your information, the depth right here is about 16,000 feet. So like uh, three miles deep. Pretty crazy, huh? It's a little creepy to think about it. We set sail 16 days ago from the Canary Islands across the Atlantic Ocean. After sailing steady at nine knots for the first 10 days, the wind finally died and we've been mostly motoring for the last week. We somehow lost a rudder and have some issues with one of our engines, but we've got one good rudder and one working engine and we've only got 200 miles left to go to make landfall at Union Island in the Grenadines. Sorry, can't use that song. It's copyrighted, but he sings it very, very well. So the wind never did kick up. We are still motoring. We uh, thought the wind was gonna pick up over the last um, 12 hours or so, but it has not. The sea state has gotten more rough, but no wind for us to sail. So we are motoring into Union Island, which uh, Keith just called, and they are short on fuel. Apparently their fuel ship or truck or whatever is late. And so if we go there and get fuel, we have to jerry jug it from the gas station, which is a pain in the butt in a boat, in a dinghy. So he's looking into other options, checking to see exactly how much fuel we have and all sorts of stuff. So stay tuned because we might run out of fuel. We're not gonna run out of fuel, but yeah. 
exciting. Not exciting. Scary. Not really scary. Boring. Definitely boring. We have um, about 24 hours left to go and we will be there somewhere where we can get fuel and produce and eggs and milk and uh, continue on with our adventure. Are we getting low on fuel? Yeah. So I made this dipstick a long time ago just to always have a backup because you never know how close your fuel gauges are. Okay, so that's 32 gallons, 52 gallons, 200 gallons all the way up here at the top. Okay. So we're going to see where we're at here. Been motoring for what six days now? Seven days? Yeah. It's showing about 32 gallons of fuel. Is that Left what the gauge there. says? Yeah, 32 gallons. It's right there at the 32 mark. 32 gallons of fuel, and we burn, if I run an engine, I burn 24 gallons an hour. I mean, uh, 24 gallons for uh, 24, a gallon an hour basically. Yeah. So there's a twenty. There's twenty four hours worth of fuel left in there. And our ETA is twenty four hours, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna go check the other one. I've transferred all the fuel from this one because we hadn't been using that port engine because of that exhaust leak. So I'm gonna check the other one. This one has about 72 gallons in it. Okay. That showed me that I had uh, 32 gallons in that one. Yeah. That one shows 137. So that's pretty close. So I've got, these are pretty close. I've got about 58 gallons or 60, 68 gallons in, in the starboard tank. And I only need 24 more gallons to get where we're going. Where we're going. Good. What, what, go, 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 go. What are you arguing about? What are you arguing about? Are you but putting I'm a sale out? I'll have it done. do it. We're going to put a sale out. Yeah. Yee. We just put the code zero up. Just put it away. The wind just came back. we go. Alright, so look at all the activity in the clouds. Lots of stuff going on in the clouds. Puffy, puffy. We had a little bit of rain earlier and it's definitely obvious that we are getting closer to the equator. And yes, we are down to one rudder well, one and a half rudders. One engine, because the other engine has an exhaust problem and it gives us all like toxic poisoning if we use it. And a uh, little bit of wind, but I think we're gonna make it. I think it, everything's gonna be just fine. We may end up uh, pulling into somewhere in Puerto Rico or the Bahamas to get the rudders, the rudder fixed. So we'll see. 17 hours left to go, 137 miles. If we keep up 7.8, 7.9, speed up our ground. Yee! How's your shift? It's good, I'm very tired. Are you? I just realized yeah. I hadn't filmed any night shifts on this whole 18 day crossing, so I thought I might. 
tell everybody what time is your night shift? From 9 to 12. So, yeah. Finn's is from... Finn's is right after me. But he only has a two-hour shift. Yeah. That's her. He only has a two-hour shift because Luke is here, so they... Divided it up. I'm the only one. Me and Dad are the only ones who have a three-hour shift now. Yeah. But anyways. Cool. And so, night shift. Tell me about your night shift. Luke Ashley has a night shift. I do. What time is your shift, Finn? And Luke? My shift is from uh, 12 to 2 o'clock. And Luke goes from 2 to 4. And then Jack goes from 4 to 6. And then Dad from 6 whenever everybody else wakes up. And what do you do on shift? Uh, we look for wind, weather, and other boats. That's about it. Can we repeat that in harmony? We look for wind, <laughs> weather, and boats. Three, two, one. We look we for, for wind, wind, weather, and, and boats. Other boats. Yeah. <laughs> Pirates. 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 Yeah. Excellent. And if anybody has a Volkswagen, Vanagon, 4x4 <laughs> diesel that they want to sell me, you know, we hey, also look for that. Um, with the pop-up top, I will buy that. Ben is ready for van life. He's ready to leave home. Yeah, but also we just, I mean, that doesn't take up the whole time, so yeah, we watch a movie or journal or do whatever. Work music, out. Sometimes. Music, work out. Awesome. Thankfully, the wind picked up around midnight, and we were able to turn off the engines, sparing what little fuel we had left, and by the light of the full moon, sail the last 51 miles to our destination. What is it about buying boats that is so difficult? In my mind, if I'm going to buy a blue water cruising boat, I'm going to spend anywhere from $300,000 to a million and a half, $2 million on a blue water cruising boat. I want to buy it from somebody who understands the mission and who has experienced that mission. Would you take marriage advice from somebody who'd never had a successful marriage? Would you get your child into child counseling from somebody who had never raised successful children? No, you wouldn't. When it comes to boat brokers, it's the same thing. There are lots of boat brokers out there that have sold hundreds and thousands of boats, but they have never lived a life that you're fixing to go live. They've never sold all their stuff on land, got rid of their fancy cars, got rid of their fancy houses, and they went out there and, and jumped in the water and lived a life on a blue water cruising boat. They may have a lot of credentials, but once again, they don't understand what you're gonna do. That's the first secret that I'm giving you right now. Check the credentials of the guy, the, the people you're dealing with when it comes to that huge investment you're fixing to make. Make sure they're on your team. And that's what we teach at Blue Water Cruising. So if you're interested in these kind of secrets, if you're interested in this kind of knowledge, join us February 11th, bluewatercruisingplan.com. We're gonna give a lot of these kind of secrets away. We're gonna teach you guys a lot of things there and see if our Blue Water Cruising courses are right for you guys. Go to bluewatercruisingplan.com and sign up for our free workshop February 11th. And I look forward to seeing you guys out there on the water. We got fuel, we dumped trash, now we're gonna get some groceries. This little store opened right at nine o'clock, which was about a minute ago. So, we've got to get some food. How's it feel to be on dry land, y'all? It feels nice. so good. It feels steady. It feels like a man gets hurt soon. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot to film in the grocery store, but we got a few things. It's kind of expensive. Uh, we got some apples, cakes, I didn't have any eggs, I didn't have any fresh milk, a little bit of produce. So something and we're not completely out of food we have some meats left some snacks some bratwurst and kind of random things so we're not gonna die
spent a couple of days in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We rang in the new year with a bunch of boats. It was a lot of fun. I forgot to film any of it again, uh, but we had a great time. And so now we're moving on to the next island. Our current plan is to quickly make our way north to Florida so we can hopefully see you at the Miami International Boat Show on February 15th and 16th. We'll be at the Highfield Boats booth to say hello and shake your hand. And the kids will have merch for sale, hats and shirts, so bring some cash or a credit card and stop by and say hi. We're also having a coming home party as this is our first time on U.S. soil since completing our circumnavigation this year. It'll be at Margaritaville in Miami on Friday night, February 16th at 7 p.m. But it's a private event. You get to have dinner and drinks with us, maybe some dancing. So reserve your seat now at sailingzatara.com. Right now, we're headed to Martinique, about 100 miles away. Anchorage. We sailed all the way in. No motor at all. There you go. On your way. Yeah. Hold on, Luke. Morning, Finn. Up. Finn's up. So, yeah, we technically anchored last night uh, on St. Lucia, just right at a little anchorage there because we it was getting late. It was about uh, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and we were just tired, and there was no point in going all night. So, we just anchored. Got a good night's sleep and then took about two, three hours this morning to get over here to Martinique. And one of the first things we do when we get to anchor is set up our shade. We're going to be here for a couple of days and then I think a three night, three night overnight journey to Puerto Rico, perhaps. Good morning, Kate. We made it to Martinique. Martinique. There's a few boats here, I would say, huh? Couple? Couple few hundred. <laughs> Couple hundred. I got this lock right here. I'm not that big one. You gotta take that one in. Yes. This is the smaller dinghy dock. There's a bigger one in another place. Let's go. What exactly did you do to your hair? Uh, or like thereof? I was shaving with the little guide clippers on there so it only cuts like a quarter of an inch off. And uh, the clip fell off and went <laughs> down the back of my head, <laughs> down to the skull, and looked like I had mange or rabies or scabies <laughs> or something. So I had to go all the way. Play. Could have got a mohawk or something. I was thinking of the mohawk. Could have put a Z in there. Put a Z in there. Big <laughs> Z. -Z. 
بزيد بالزرع Don't forget bluewatercruisingplan.com February 11th. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. It's going to be good. We're going to teach you all about it. Woo! Beautiful. All right, we did this without the kids because they're all busy today. And they're going to be a little upset because they love waterfalls. And this is a beautiful one. I don't know if I'm going to get in or not. I don't have a swimsuit on. Keith got in his underwear. That's pretty. Dang it. I'm not getting in. I don't have a swimsuit on. <laughs> Tell all you guys, blue water. I'm gonna give you two things that we teach, valuable things that we teach right now, but you're gonna to have to hold on for a second. I look forward to seeing you guys out there on the water. All right, that's good. <laughs>